Welcome to the Audiation in the Wild podcast with your hosts, Bo Talifer and Eric Rasmussen. Season 3, Episode 5, Ear Training Part 2. So we started this series of doing uh, some ear training stuff. You know, quote unquote ear training, audiation. Um, and we went through... And we probably talked about making rhythms more interesting. And we learned that that was a good progression for Go Tell Aunt Rody and Mary Had a Little Lamb and London Bridge and um, Little Bunny Foo Foo and Itsy Bitsy Spider and the Wheels on the Bus. And there's probably another one. And you learned to audiate that as one five one with your fingers and do so if you were doing uh solfege and we were doing before that bum 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 bye yeah and putting the melodies to it and have the kids sing the root melodies and you sing the melody and vice versa we probably did all that but then we got into instead of dominant we thought we might do this that do you remember way far la so far re ti do mi so mi do fleece is white as or my fair lady or went up the spot sorry out again and I don't know if we talked about this Gives it just a little more richness. So now what did I do? Re. And adding do. So adding a seventh to the D minor chord if you're in C. Or let's call it in the way I call it with my kids is super tonic, dominant, tonic, super tonic with an added do. We could even do this super tonic and an added low. So, if we could talk about added tones, um, that's an easy sidestep to take without having to expand too much your audiation. You're still working inside the same functions. But then we went from two, five, one, two, like one. what that one is. contrasted that with uh, which is way different than even despite the voicing so easy. And then we started to hint at what else we could do besides just two, five, one, or two, or two, right tone substitution. And there's so many, I just cheated instead of doing that. I did. It just gives it a little different flavor if you don't add the extra tones to it. So uh -huh. that was kind of a lot compressed into a short amount of time but 
you can always go back and review the ear training session. Does that is does that cover what we did? We started yeah, I think to so. talk about, but I don't think we did six two five one. Yeah, we didn't we didn't fully uh, dive into it. I kind of played some examples. Uh, yeah, that's right. Near the end. Yep, you did. So, so yeah, you're much better the the jazzer technically <laughs> in every other way than I am. Take take it away. Take us further than what I've taught my kids. So this progression, this one six two five progression, um, is such a good harmonic pattern to to explore because it, um, it it's just so applicable in different settings. And one of the reasons I like it is you can subtract um, functions out of it too. So you can you can easily just turn it into a set of one six two five being this. I'm just walking the bass a little bit, but it's the, those are the basic roots. Um, you could just play one, uh, the one chord twice. adding a little bit of functions behind the root tones um, and you can also start dressing these functions up so like here's the van here's vanilla one six two five it's very vanilla in terms of the voicings you could spice it up a bit just by adding extra tones Actually, I didn't change any of the functions. I just I just changed them to yep, like just the dominant sevens, tones. just extra tones. So all the root all the root melodies for the that I was was the same. You could actually change the functions themselves. Like all right, now you got to go back and explain what, what's going on there. So what did I just do there? So I, this was the this was the root melody that I was hearing. And I went like this. So why did I do that? What was I thinking there? What was I audiating? Um, just like we played, instead of instead of going two five one, which the the root melody would be re so do in the regular two five one, we can change that to re ra. So we can make a substitution there. Um, you can also substitute instead of the six. So instead of going, you can actually substitute. And this is where the tonal solfege I don't think is as well mapped out, um, just because jazz typically doesn't use tonal solfege. Although that by no means doesn't mean we shouldn't be using it. Uh, it's just uh, not culturally done very uh, much. And I'm hell bent to. In that to bring it in as much as possible that makes sense for the kids but i haven't gotten uh so i do six two five one uh with mm -hmm. my kids and compare it to six two five one from other songs where the two is a little two instead of a big two where the six is a big six instead of a little six and we just start to and, and that's easy if they know six two five one from lollipop well or which whichever six two five one they know best then I compare uh -huh. the next one to it, and then I, you know, totally. start messing around with, you know, uh, five, you know, five a six, six two five, five a six six, five a five five. Yeah, well, let let's go through some of those. So like this this one that I was recommending here, this is the vanilla. Sorry. I'm just gonna change one of the chords. That's the that's the root melody there, but I'll add the functions to it. So we get May as, as a substitution for La. 
And now, in, in my head, if we're in the, the key of C, I'm thinking E flat seven. That's really what. So if we did some patterns with it, some tonal bounds. <laughs> deviating from the patterns just that feels more natural to me to do st something like that um, but that you would just and keep you know if, if you're not super solid yet on re ra do um, you don't have to you don't have to go like this because I substituted a couple things there right so I, may, I might just start with one substitution Spend some time to to get that in your ear, um, and then this thing that Eric was talking about after, where we're what was the one you you mentioned doing five of six? Yep. Right. So maybe like something like this instead of instead of going. So I just change instead of one, I'm doing. 506, and I'm playing a certain voicing of it here. But you get this as the root. Instead of. And then you can start exploring with different types of voicings and different types of. Um, adding extensions and stuff like that like this one I, you you start to develop a preference for certain voicings like i, I really like this 506 i'm using like a sharp nine i like that sound over this this progression is really quite um one of the cool things about this progression it can just take a beating in terms of like here's another substitution this one's even more out there listen to this one it almost um at this point it, it starts being more about where you're heading to than than the actual um specific relationship one of the chords has with one of the other chords uh, I know I'm gonna get to C in a certain, you know, harmonic rhythm, and it doesn't all really matter how I get there. Um, right. That's a full Thanksgiving meal full of uh, patterns there. <laughs> what and, I, and, and, yeah, that that's ahead, to help Eric. teachers get into their uh, wheelhouse uh, with where they can, you know, play around and, and start to learn functions on your own. Uh, that sequence might be the way I would teach a student if the student comes in with a lot of jazz chops already. But um, but uh, it, it, it's a lot. <laughs> but say, for example, if your student was not ready to le start learning all these voicings and like E flat 7 chords and D flat 7 tritone stuff and stuff, you can still get them to sing these basic root melodies. Oh, yeah. You always start with the... With the, the listening vocabulary, put it inside of familiar contexts, uh, and then, right, and then perform that stuff, perform the roots, uh, and then I would solfege all of those chords totally. in, in a harmonic, right, sequence, so that you're singing... The tonal patterns of the six chord, the tonal patterns of the two chord, tonal patterns of the five chord, tonal patterns of the one chord. And then go back and do those and then start to add and keep that same sequence and that same rhythmic um, context, the same harmonic rhythm, and do uh, added tones to those. First of all, there's, of course, there's like a hundred just six chords, right, that you could sing when you start adding extra tones to them. Uh, but do some that do tonal patterns with voicings. That, so totally. when that six goes to the two chord, that you're not moving everything up to the, you know, 
you know, with the six in the base, now the two's in the base, and build the chord up from there. No, do. Can I show an example of that, yeah, just please. so people can yeah. hear that? So yeah, we're if talking we, about if it. Just yeah, if we just establish. We did some patterns. Eric's, Eric's talking about doing stuff like this. Yeah, except just the tonal patterns without the rhythm. Yeah, it's That's hard for me to do, do that. Yeah, now. You, like it, it just doesn't feel <laughs> like the mm -hmm. you, know, you know what I'm getting at. But it can be yep. done if you want to. Because when you're improvising, those are the patterns you actually need. You need patterns that voice lead. You don't need this. This is not a great idea. doesn't sound bad it's just it's surprisingly unuseful while you're improvising because the phrases won't naturally go in that that sounds like more it, like a riff than a, than a melody it, it, it sounds a little bit like 50s rock <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. it's what the, what it is versus the jazz uh stuff uh, I wanted to back up just one one step. I, I don't know the copyright issue on this song, so I apologize. I'm just not going to play it in, in in the event that we have to get taken oh, come down on. or Bring, something. That does, no, what the worst that'll happen is they'll we'll, they'll tell we us can't to take it down. <laughs> okay, S stormy weather is a song that works well with um, just this straight up one six two five thing, and it can handle all these substitutions. Don't know why. Got no sun up in the sky, stormy weather. Keeps raining all the time. All right, break that down for us. Just the last four. The last four? What did I. Um... So this is the one chord. This is tritone sub of six. So right now we're in the key of C. This is E flat dominant seven. This is D seven. This is D flat seven. You just get a string of dominant chords. So the root melody is bum, 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 bum. And that's just some literally just improvising with the tonal patterns nothing and nothing fancy just resolving them so what's really um, close to that turnaround which is a term used a lot for getting us back home that one six two five do one that's similar but different enough that we can hear the differences and in, in, in terms change of one change one chord or change two of those chords I want to do the, you know, what it is from what it isn't. So do that one again, and then what it isn't, and then go back and forth for a couple iterations. Okay, what I'll keep, what I'll do is I'll keep playing this one that's C E flat D seven, D flat seven. I'll keep playing that one, and then a different one, and then that one, and a different one, and I'll do that a bunch of times in a row. So here's here's the here's the one I just played. Played something that different a, than the different. That was that was a well. I keep playing a different. I keep playing a you, different one. Yeah, no. I wanted to hear just A B A B. He went A. Oh, just A B A B. Yeah, yeah. That was A B A C. Uh, yeah. So if you want just A B A B, here you go. Here, here's the total vanilla one. Once more vanilla. Here's the sub. Try tone no. substitution of six. Yeah. This was the same thing, but I'm walking it a little bit. 
before I was trying to bring out the bass line a little yep. more. Yeah, you know, that's the, the anchor. I, I need more. Th yeah. The way I'm playing it, I'm trying to bring out the root melody. Yeah. Which I find helps, because if you can't sing the root melody, good luck. <laughs> exactly. The, but you said something really cool, that this is a turnaround. So, um, you know, Stormy Weather is a song that, like, pretty much uses this progression just straight up. But uh, where else do you see this? Anytime you're in a, in a tune and there's just, like, a prolonged one chord, like in the blues. So if you go... Uh, Yep. So I just did the one six two five there, and now I can do it quickly. Let me play the whole thing again so you can yep. hear it. This up yeah, there. So up. what's cool about the blues is you can jam this one six two five in like right at the end, or you could just not, or you could just not play it in. But it, it's honestly one of the most like versatile progressions to know. It's in everything. It's in jazz, blues, Mozart's on it. Bach uses one six two five, and it handles substitutions really well. Like just take an assault on, or like here's another one. can get this this is the half diminished too it's a beautiful sound i learned this from joe pass i watched the joe pass has a video about this that i just like yeah, basically it was an hour long great. tone it yeah. was an hour long tonal pattern like just burned into I, i've i've sung everything on it he does some cool stuff like uh So those are just, I'm just, I'm just really thinking of, um, once you have the vanilla tonal patterns down, you just learn the tonal patterns for these subs and these lines start sounding, you know, very, melodic. I don't know what, yeah, they sound melodic, but, uh, voice leading is, it, it's super useful to learn voice led tonal patterns for that reason. Cause they just translate into improv really well. Yeah, and then drop a few notes here and there, then it doesn't sound like you're playing uh, a stock lick all the, all the way through. Or if you use like Burt Ligon stuff, like you get this kind of sound. I was thinking one, six, two, Five. but it's really just learning like uh, there's a there's a couple melodies that he recommends that are they're just melodic pattern they're licks basically but they're they're very worth learning just because they help you weave the lines in in a way that makes uh, tonal sense yeah everything you're playing sounds familiar to me i've heard it a hundred times i don't know exactly what you're doing um audiationally like a hundred percent sure but i can noodle with anybody doing that right kind of a mm -hmm. gut reaction because i know where i'm going and if you add a note that kind of uh doesn't fit right on that's a really good spicy note and then just move from there to something that maybe isn't um uh, as uh you know as uh you know what, what's the word i want basically uh, uh, constant or dissonant. dissonant one thing you can do I just that I wanted to say because like I don't think we're at the point where we have uh, like we have tonal patterns but you know your curriculum has tonal patterns Andy Mullen has free tonal patterns online you can get all these but you know what if you what do you do if you're a teacher and you're trying to get these sounds into your ears I, I would love to create these uh, recordings that people could use I just haven't yet you can you can go in the back door a little bit but be very 
knowledgeable about doing it properly, record yourself playing the chords with the root melody and A, B, A, B them back and forth, and then listen to them and sing along with them, and then record your own patterns and sing those. That's what I do. Yeah, for sure. That's, um, a, so, that's a really good way. We, you were going to finish what you're saying. Sorry. Yeah, it's, so it's totally fine to, um, you know, like Eric always says, if you've blown the doors of theory open, um, okay, they're open. Like, uh, I'm, I'm not saying pretend to be able to audiate these when you can't, but take it on an instrument like a piano or a guitar and play the functions, play the root tones, or put it into um, band in a box and just make an A, B. Like, this is 1, 6, 2, 5, and this is 1, 6, 2, 5 when I change the 2 to a dominant 2. Yeah. And see if you can really identify the difference in there. Uh, and start with one change at a time because you're not gonna you're not gonna properly um, you can learn this if you just do a bunch of subs at once. But start with one thing, then add a second thing, yeah. and then add a third thing. Yeah. So in my book, the tunes that I have that do this, uh, well, the one that I don't have in my book because I don't couldn't get the copyrights to it, <laughs> uh, is let me do let me change to this key. get that in your ear and you hear this two five one six and the kids have heard that and I play we do rhythm stick activity with that and they've heard that for a year or, or whatever and then the, another thing I'll do Once you get used to And then you hear Please don't take And that's just because that's in the melody The extra tone That's just me over top of And there's your 6, 2, 5, 1 But now And you've sung that song You've sung the roots to, well, the roots to lollipop and the roots to sunshine at the very end are exactly the same, right? The, yeah. the names of the notes are exactly the same. The functions are not, you know, because yeah. you've got the, the function, right? And that's another thing I like to do is find a song that has little ray to big ray. And you can do it, you know, please don't. kids just go no <laughs> they revolt if they hear lollipop with a big two and the same uh -huh. way they should revolt please don't you know take my sunshine i'm sorry i can get it wrong again take, take my sunshine it's just wrong uh -huh. it's just flat out wrong because they're so acculturated in the in the other six two five one so, you know, um, they become very obviously different, even though it's still six two five one. It's just that you've changed the two, and then the other, uh, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine. Now what's the six? It's a big six, a little two. Big six. I mean, little 
six, two, five. What, what am I doing? No, it's five and six. All right. The dominant to six. I see. I can't think theoretically. Me, la, re, so, do is what I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm terrible at this. I'm better with kids, guys. Um, because they tell me what they're ready for, and the audience, I have no idea what you're ready for. <laughs> You said something uh, really interesting that I wanted to touch on is that like, you know, you had this, you had this big two. Um, this chord, the big two with me in the top. And I wanted to talk about like when you're making chord substitutions, it can be really interesting to put a tone that's quite stable in the tonality. So like if I put so. Uh, in the in in the top voice, it's interesting if you put chords underneath that that have so in them but are more adventurous. So like this, that's where I'm getting this this E7 sharp nine or this five of six. Um, it has so in the top, and so is quite. So is quite stable in in major. It's very it's very common. Or for example, if when I'm doing. Um, is also like pretty normal in major and that can be a really fun way to play around with these substitutions or or like what if i keep so pinned to the top of every chord it's a fun way to play around with this uh, as well um because you can get quite adventurous with what you put in there. I mean, or this here. Because this tone sounds so normal in major. But you put adventurous sounds underneath it. It's a, it's a interesting way to go about it. Yeah. So once my kids get. Little two five one and big two five one and big six little two five one and big six big two five one right then you can do big six right everything's big yeah exactly and then you do everything little until dominant and tonic and I you know once they get that now you, that's easily transferable to the dominant of anything I just started teaching my kids the dominant of the supertonic uh, they're my first year class and they've got dominant to the supertonic down in major uh, uh, what, what tune was I doing um, it wasn't it wasn't take me out to the ball game that's one of them I forget what the song was I was teaching Saturday but at any rate, oh, I know. It was minor. It was. Uh, I'm sorry. It was oh, the dominant yeah, yeah, of yeah. The, the. It was the dominant of the subdominant. It was a, in D minor. It was a D seven going to G minor. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So. And this is this is where we start. There's your minor, and then. And they got that so quickly that That's they just really said, oh, it's change. just la, it's just la, and it's not tonic anymore. It's la D, la D, D, D. Huh? Right? And then, re, 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 la. That's where, that's the song I was teaching. Um, it was just that's so That's actually quick. a really common change. Super common change. Yep. It's the first one I use in minor that's outside of your typical, well, I do do Andalusian, but I don't name the functions. Uh, mm -hmm. And I do do uh, tonic dominant, subdominant, subtonic in minor. Uh, that those are the ones yeah. I use in minor. Uh, the Andalusian I do, but I, I haven't named the submediant yet. It just doesn't make sense that the submediant's under the subtonic mm -hmm. uh, to the kids. So I don't use that just for vocabulary reasons. 
Um, and the dominant of mm. the subdominant in minor is is really common. Uh, in minor. Oh yeah, yeah. It's one yeah. of my it's my favorite secondary dominant in minor for the kids because it's just so easy for them. It's and then the in double so dominant much literature too. too. Yeah. That the double dominant comes from using songs that are like Jingle Bells that has the double dominant in it, but I'm just switching to minor tonality. You know what else has a double dominant in minor? Uh, Hall of the Mountain King. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's got more. And then it's got the tritone sub. Yeah. It's big too. You can make a cool progression. Listen to this. All right. That's fun. Holy smokes. Yeah. You know, I wanted to share a little story about this. I went for a guitar lesson with this guy in Vancouver who's fantastic, and he, he's a real, like, shredder, you know. It's just... I went there to learn that kind of stuff. And uh, he's actually, you know, has a big background in playing jazz tunes, and he just pulled out a lead sheet for this tune. I it was like some Latin tune, and the first change was C major 7. to C sharp diminished, or that means basically a 6 chord. And I was having fun with it. It was great. And then I went home and I learned how to play C major seven to C diminished. And my whole like harmonic world opened up. This was in like grade eight or grade nine. And I was just like, I'm in love with these sounds. Like there's just like, there's nothing else like that change. And, and it was, I mean, the start of me getting into jazz was just this one secondary dominant, yeah. just the big six. It just, it's so different than, yeah. um, it just has such an amazing sound to it. Well, diminished chords are very versatile. They work across, you know, three major landing zones really quickly. You know, uh -huh. go to you can go to anywhere practically. Maybe that's where we should go in the next episode. Is is uh, you know where do we use diminished chords? Okay, we're going farther than my head can go. But <laughs> <laughs> Not without a lot of practice, but yeah, no, I, I'm just keeping up with the kids best I can. <laughs> big law, yep. little law, big so, little so, whatever. You know, and, and another way you can use these, like for example, um, I, I just use a lot of this as listening vocabulary. I just, you know, I play basic tunes with my younger kids, and I just, I just jam yep. with them, and I reharmonize everything. So at least if they're not learning you know, do all these crazy tritone subs. They are very used to the sounds. Like, oh, yeah. Not... I was teaching my tritone subs uh, with the kids again just to reintroduce it to their ears. Uh, tritone you know. subs, you know, they get a very heavy, like, theoretical rap. Like, no, But they're very simple to hear. Like, like, can you hear the difference between these two? That's one. One more time. It just stands out. It's like actually, I think it's easier to probably hear than this. Which is a funny point to make. You know, the tritones of a five might be easier to discriminate between four and five. <laughs> no. We need to do. It's a, just, it's so alien. We like, need to sounding. do a, a, cor a chordal taxonomy mm -hmm. and, and get that down. That boy, I need. I need to be rich enough to hire somebody just to do what I tell them to so I could get all this work done and I could take a nap while it's happening. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, this is so much. Every time we talk, it's like there's a million projects. It's like, okay, how do I put that one on hold for a while? But, uh, yeah, no, it's good. There's one more that we didn't that. talk about. Can I can I A B one more? Yeah, yeah. There's one more. I forgot to I forgot to do this one. So here's the vanilla one. Here's the change. Oh, one more time. One, yeah. It's a subtle variation, but there's a lot of them. It's it's uh. Yeah, and I found I, that 
Go ahead, Eric. It, it just gets easy. It seems overwhelming when you would do all at once, right? But once you start knocking down one or two blocks of, of this, it the it gets easier. It's not like the same amount of work to get to the next level. It's much. Oh easier. yeah, no, actually, I th I actually think the biggest amount of work is just getting one six two five in your ear. <laughs> just the vanilla change. Um, the rest of it with extra tones, can... though. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's really what we're talking about. Is you have two options here. You can play the the same function with extra tones and and change make the harmony more sophisticated in terms of the voicings, or you can change the actual. Uh, function to another function yeah. that complements it and then some of the best moments in jazz are when somebody's on one and somebody's on the other and they just adapt to each other and it's like it's uh -huh. not intentional but it's so beautiful uh -huh. i mean joe pass talks about this in, in that video where he talks about 1625 but 1625 is a good way of sizing up where people are with their harmonic preferences if you play with a you know blues band and uh, the turnaround where the 1625 happens, someone always plays big two. Like every time. You can start telling, well, they like big two. So I'm just going to go for big two when we're at that part of the at the turnaround when they're soloing, because that's probably what they're going to want to play. But then you'll start noticing, okay, this guy likes change. This guy likes one six flat six to five. I'm calling it the root melody. Um, and that's what I'll play. And so you start to learn what people's harmonic preferences are um, with this progression. It's just kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Instantly respond to what you're hearing. Give them, give them the first beat of the, of the chord, and then you come in because no, then you know exactly where he is and where you're gonna go. And there's a whole side area. If you're, what do you do if you're not sure? You just play thirds and sevenths. So you just go like this, or even. You just you just stay out of the way as much as you can <laughs> uh, until you know what they're. Yeah, wait, their wait ear for the is. first. I wait for the chord to hit if I'm unsure, and then I, I, I go from there. <laughs> yeah. I let them let them take the lead on that, and then once it hits, then I, I I usually know where where it is. Without without I don't know the theory though. I really don't. Or I can I can sit down and write it out. And, and know it that way, but it doesn't help me. It just doesn't help. I just uh -huh. need to play, that's all. That's what I need to do, just play. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's the funny thing about this is having, there are plenty of people that have the theoretical understanding for why a tritone sub works and all that, but they, they can't play them. They can't hear them. And it's not really worth anything unless you can audiate it. Once you can audiate it, I'm all down for labeling things, however suits your needs. Uh, but yeah, you just got to learn to sing this stuff. And that's the point about the tritone subs. They sound so theoretically, like, air quote, advanced, but they're really easy to yeah. hear. <laughs> no, they're, they're easy for my kids to recognize. That's all they're doing. They're not identifying it yet, but they recognize sure. it. Yeah. So, all right. There you go. All right. That was, <laughs> that's that was a lot. Fun. It's good. Mm -hmm. 